Welcome back it's to watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and first, um, um, first major conversation um, as Nigeria's next general elections in 2023 get closer. Uh, stakeholders are stressing the importance of greater citizens' participation in the electoral process. Now, why is this important? Let's remind you that subsection 2 or subsection 2 uh, A of the Section 14 of the Constitution of the Federal uh, Republic of Nigeria uh, states, quote, sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from whom government through this constitution derives all its powers and authorities. Sovereignty belongs to the people. Now, subsection C of the same section, uh, uh, paragraph C of the same subsection 2 of section 14 says the participation by the people in their government shall be ensured in accordance with the provisions of its or this constitution. So why is it important that people participate and why are the citizens not participating as they should? Um, we have as guests to help us answer these questions and other questions as well, uh, Jiri Johnson, who has been a regular on this program, and Dr. Enes Ereke um, of Yaga Africa as well. Uh, Jiri Johnson, good morning to you. Good morning, Kofi, and good morning, Messi, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you very much. Uh, the 2023 elections are around the corner, uh, not really necessarily around the corner, but we're getting closer with every passing day. Um, uh, why is it important that citizens' um, participation be enhanced and increased? Well, if you constitution, it states clearly that we, the people, democracy is about the people. And the illusion of democracy, and I say that the illusion of democracy is that majority of the people will participate in the process. That's the illusion that democracy has created, that, well, by right and by design, majority of the people will participate in the process of instituting democracy in any given society. However, we have seen, in terms of voters' turnout and citizen participation in the electoral process, across the globe, where we have um, the Greek model of democracy, the direct representative democracy that we run, we have seen that you don't get more than 50, 55% voters' turnout when it comes to the election. When you look at the last election in Nigeria, I'm not sure we got 30%. Of, of, of the voters' turnout, uh, which led me to the conclusion that um, the democracy, representative democracy, is actually government of the minority, perpetrated by the docility of the majority, who refuse to participate in the political process, hence gives the minority the opportunity to control and manage the affairs of the state. Now, how many people? We have 80 plus million Nigerians that are registered voters. You know how many people elected the president in the last election? They were not up to 16 million. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Johnson, very interesting interesting point you've raised. Just before uh, Mercy comes in, you've raised a, a very important point, uh, talking about how many people voted for um, the president in the last election. We can we can look at those, um, those figures now. Uh, uh, you know, the, the popular vote was carried by 15 million, um, 15 million, uh, 15 million 191,847. Let's just call it 15 million uh, out of the total number of votes cast. So that's really uh, a, a minority as far as that election is concerned. Um, you know, uh, so so it, it's small, really, really small. Um, uh, what's response? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Then, then, then you see that uh, you ask yourself this question. So those 15 million foisted their will. Now, 15 million decided who would take charge of the life and make policies for the well-being of over 200 million, over close to 250 million, million. If you remove that 15 million from the 18, it means that those that did not support the president are actually more than those that supported the president-elect. That's the reality. That's the illusion of democracy. Is the unfortunate aspect of democracy. And that's why we have found ourselves. Now, look, just last week in Ekiti State, 
they had their primaries. And you have a situation whereby we have seen governors being elected with less than 200,000 votes. Faimi was elected as the governor of the state with less than 200,000 votes. Um, um, Soludo was elected as governor of Anambra state with less than, with less than 350,000 votes. Are you with me? And if you are talking about the president of Nigeria was elected with less than, and they know what they, they are doing because they don't want the majority of the citizens to participate. That's why they use threats, they use intimidation, they use struggle, they do bad things, do not engage, the agencies of government that should engage in citizen education will not engage in citizen education to mobilize the citizenry to participate in the process. So they don't want the majority of the people to participate in the process in order to perpetuate themselves in power. Okay, so G.D. Johnson, now um, you you have mentioned the reason why you know some persons do not participate in the entire process. And for me, I usually would not want to limit you know the election to the presidential elections. I'm talking about the entire elections in the 36 states. We're talking about the government governorship elections, the the House of Representatives. I mean, all of the elections, including the local governments. Even though we know we haven't been very strong with local government elections for a very uh, you know for some time now. But however, that's the focus. Now, some people trying to interact, you know, of recent times with some persons, they, they constantly share the reason why a lot of people are not even planning to vote in the 2023 elections. And some of them say, we already know who will become the governor of the state. We already know who will become the local, cham local government chairman. We already know who will become the president. And so it's not important. My vote does not count. Now, these are some of the concerns. These are some of the issues that you still have right now as we speak, as we get closer to 2023. So we'd like to share your thoughts on that. How can we change this narrative? Because 2023 is not far as we speak the role of the national orientation agencies that's the role of INEC and the role of other government agencies that are in, involved the role of the civil society the role of the nigerian labor congress because when you get majority of the people to participate in the process then you deepen democracy and then you provide the basis of legitimacy for elected representative now when the narrative goes around that, oh, my vote does not count. What does agencies of government, what do they do? The National Orientation Agency, the Ministry of Information and Culture, the Nigerian Television Authority, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. What do they do? Which are agencies, which are public information agencies? Apart from being media organizations, they are also public information agencies of government. They have a role in educating in creating awareness, in mobilizing people. We don't even know who the, let, let, let's say that what, what, what type of campaign has federal government or state government embarked upon to ensure that we mobilize the citizenry to participate in the process to, to it is easier for you to collect your ATM card than for you to collect your voter's card. It's easier. What process have we put in place to ensure that people can cast their vote easily? don't have to go through stress they don't have to walk 10 kilometers to cast their vote you know the what we do with voters card with voters registration drive is to tie something with it all if you don't get the voters card your children will not be able to get immunization they will not be able to get this benefit of so people get the voters card in order to meet up with some benefits that have been tied to it they don't actually get the voters card to participate in the process and now and so as a result of that, some will get the voter's card. They will get the voter's card very, very close to the office. On the day of the election, where they got the voter's card from, their polling unit is far away from their, from, 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 from their residence. So they can't go to where they actually registered. Two, we have heavy militarization, heavy, heavy militarization of our democratic process. You go to other clients, the day they are doing election, it's like a party in our own. For those of us that have experienced military coup, that know the morning of the military coup, it's like there is a military coup. Day of our election, you see soldiers all over, police all over, roadblocks. People, even if you are, if you want to go and cast your vote, you'll be intimidated by police. And then before you open your eye, you just see that 
even ballot boxes are being snatched, despite the fact that you have every security. So these are some of the issues we need to attend. Okay, Dr. Reke, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Mr. Julie Johnson would like to bring in uh, uh, Dr. Ernest Reke of Iaga Africa uh, and also of the Department of Political Science, a senior lecturer in the Department of Political Science, University of Abuja. Um, Ernest Reke, can you hear us, please? Yes, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, Julie Johnson, our guest here, um, has, has so eloquently put um, forward reasons why he thinks um, we have uh, uh, reduced or low participation by the citizens of Nigeria in elections in the past. I mean, we look at um, 2000 and 2019, where we had um, just uh, 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 80, out of 84 million registered voters, we're having uh, only 34.75% voter turnout, that's including the rejected votes, that's uh, 28.614 uh, million votes cast. What's going on? What pro what's the reason for this low participation? Fine. Um, I, I, I think your guest has mentioned some of those reasons and also proffered a solution to, to them. But then I think I would disagree a bit and um, probably add a few things to what he, he, he said. One is that there is a trust uh, a deficit between citizens and those who govern. Now, um, when I mean trust deficit, I refer to the fact that uh, Nigerians believe that they are not getting a fair deal from government and from governance. Nigerians believe that promises are made to them during elections. Uh, politicians make uh, all sorts of promises and claims, and eventually they disappoint Nigerians. And so Nigerians feel that they are not uh, that they are not getting a fair deal from government, and therefore they believe that it is a waste of time, you know, going to cast uh, votes at the uh, elections. And this is a very very serious problem because government is not delivering on em on, on uh, employment. Government has not been delivering on infrastructure. Government has not been delivering on security. Government has not been delivering those services that will improve the living conditions of citizens. And therefore, Nigerians feel that they are completely detached from government. They feel that there is no benefit being part of this thing called a government. They feel that government and governance is for a few class of people in the country. It is something exclusively reserved for the political elite who benefit from government. And therefore, it is one of the major reasons, this is one of the major reasons why citizens do not turn out, you know, to vote in elections. And even in a situation where they turn out, they begin to sell their votes because they believe that selling their votes is the only thing they can get from politicians and from government. Now, that is one. Then, secondly, is the fact that elections have not been properly conducted in the real sense of it in the country. Nigerians believe, just like your, your, your guest equally uh, mentioned, Nigerians believe ultimately that before elections are conducted, that the, that the winners of the elections are already known and determined by, by, by the political elite. And therefore, they feel, why should I go and waste my time standing in the sun under the rain just to cast a vote where, when the vote will not be counted and when the vote will not make a difference. And therefore, citizens are discouraged largely from going out to vote in elections as a result of the fact that they believe that the system is rigged, that the system is manipulated, and that the, the system is already predetermined even before ballots are cast. Then equally important is to mention the fact that Desperate power grabbers in Nigeria have turned politics and elections into a do or die uh, affair. It has become warfare and therefore they unleash violence and mayhem during elections. And the citizens equally fear for their lives and, uh, and it discourages them from going out to vote in elections. And it is, this is added 
to the to the to the prevailing insecurity across the country. And so, if you take the totality of some of these factors, and of course there are many more of these factors. For instance, there is the, the issue of illiteracy where people do not know their rights. There is also the issue of poverty and so on, and, and equally poor uh, civic education and enlightenment. And so if you take all of these factors combined, they, they, they discourage citizens from voting in, in elections. But mm -hmm. where I said I disagree a little bit from uh, your guest there, is when you talk about uh, how to address all of this, whose responsibility is, is it to address this? Yes, government has a role to play in mobilizing citizens to vote in elections. But importantly and ultimately, the greatest beneficiaries of, of, of elections are political parties and candidates who want to occupy political offices with the responsibilities and privileges attached to those responsibilities. Political parties... And, uh, and candidates have not done enough in educating citizens, in mobilizing citizens, in enlightening citizens, and also in giving citizens the confidence and assurance that when they are voted into office, they will live through to the promises they have made. They have not done enough, when you talk about rejected ballots, they have not done enough in educating and enlightening citizens about how to, to, to turn print in, you know, on the ballot. And so political parties, we must, we, we must say that political parties are largely to be blamed for, for the low turnout, number one, and for even the, 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 the rejected ballots that we have seen during uh, elections in the country. If you have followed, and I want to believe you have followed, campaigns in the country, now, campaigns are, are turned to jamborees where people go to dance and gyrate. No serious messages are given out during campaigns in Nigeria. And that is one area I believe that political parties have failed in terms of mobilizing and educating citizens to vote in elections. Okay, um, uh, let's also look at, you know, post-elections. I mean, uh, this is pre-elections, just before the elections, what we should do and the reason why a lot of persons have not participated. And it looks as if 2023, not to sound like, uh, you know, message, a messenger of doom here, but we, we probably might not just have something different from what we have always experienced in terms of participation, because where the, that's where, you know, the bulk, almost the bulk of the work lies. But let's also look at, you know, just after, you know, the elections, I mean, casting your votes. What also can citizens do? Because there's also a quest where people say, oh, some elements actually hijack the ballot boxes. Uh, you know, the results are being, you know, manipulated. There's no transparency in the system. Is there anything that citizens, Nigerians, can actually do to ensure that, you know, the votes are protected? Yes, uh, Nigerians have uh, a, a lot to do in terms of uh, protection of votes. Because one of the things is that citizens must realize that um, when we cast our votes, that on that ballot is contained infrastructure, that ballot contains security, that ballot contains job opportunities, that ballot contains improved standard of living, that ballot contains a good education, and all of those things that we yearn for. And therefore, we must, take, uh, we must take the protection of those votes seriously. Now, one of the things citizens can do is, of course, what uh, civil society organizations have been doing in terms of encouraging and mobilizing citizens to ensure that they are eternally vigilant in order towards protecting their votes during elections. And in time past, we have seen communities where citizens resisted efforts, you know, by politicians and, uh, and political thoughts, you know, to either cut away ballot boxes or electoral materials or even manipulate the system. And therefore, citizens' resistance and vigilance is one of those measures that we can take in order to protect the sanctity of the ballots to ensure that those we vote during elections are those who eventually occupy political offices. That is one of the things that you know citizens must do: eternal vigilance and uh, and resistance, you know, to some of these uh, political you know power grabbers. 
that is one thing Nigerians must do in order to ensure that their, their, their votes are protected. But importantly is to mention that uh, the integrity we have called to question, the integrity of the electoral process, uh, which uh, dissuades and discourages uh, citizens from participating in, in elections. We have mentioned that the integrity of the process is, is, uh, is, uh, can be called to question. But good enough, uh, through the continued agitation of Nigerians and sustained campaigns and advocacy around all of this, the National Assembly has amended the electoral law with some very progressive provisions that will ensure that our, our elections become credible. And therefore, uh, we are hopeful that as soon as the president signs the bill, as we are expecting that he will do this week, as soon as he signs the bill, it will mark a new chapter in the conduct of elections in Nigeria. It will, it will, it will enthrone integrity and restore citizens' confidence in the electoral process. And therefore, uh, I believe strongly that through the electoral uh, bill, which has been amended, through the electoral act, which has been amended, that we can begin to improve our elections, restore integrity in the process, and citizens will have more confidence in the electoral process. And it, it is therefore important that we call on all Nigerians to continue to sustain, I mean, to sustain the call that the president should sign that bill so that we can sanitize our electoral process and system. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rick. Let, let's come back to uh, Mr. G.D. Johnson. Uh, uh, Mr. Johnson, we, we have some statistics here I'd still like to go back to. Um, of course, like you mentioned earlier, um, about 34%, precisely 34.75% of, of uh, registered voters came out to vote in the 2019 presidential election. Out of those 34... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out of those 34.75%, um, uh, we have, um, uh, um, you know, 20, 28.614 million votes. That's what it represents out of the total registered voters of 82.344 million. So we look at 28.614 million votes. Atiku Abubakar polled uh, um, uh, 11 million votes. Mohammed Buhari polled 15 million votes. You add the two votes together, you have 26 million votes. Out of all the voters that we have registered in Nigeria, of 82.3 million voters, 56 million people did not vote. So we have a pool of 56 million that are waiting to be taken. That's on one side. Now, we look at the other political parties um, and the, the, the votes that they had. All the parties combined had about 2.6 million votes. Only 2.6 million votes, which is very, very, yeah, minute. About um, uh, just, just about 3.2% about of the entire vote. 3.2% of the entire vote cast in the 2019 presidential elections. Um, uh, Dr. Reke has talked about the fact that political parties need to pull their weight. It seems these small parties are not pulling their weights enough. I mean, 2.6 million votes. Why, or, why yeah. do we... Why do we register those parties? Why does our ballot paper have to look like ledger? Why? It's waste waste of resources. We have said it. INEC should stop wasting taxpayers' money by registering and making provisions on the ballot paper for parties, non-existent parties. In fact, we only have political platforms. I agree with um, what Dr. And I said concerning parties should do more. Political parties are just one of the major stakeholders in the in the political environment. They should do more. But however, we don't have political parties in Nigeria. What we have is political platforms. People just use these platforms to run for election. After they run for election, they don't do the structure of this of these um, part, political parties. Two, INEC has a role to play. INEC is the umpire. INEC is the body. INEC is the body we vote huge amount of money for to conduct elections, to be in charge of elections. And you know we have pre-election, election, and post-election. So if you were, if you examine INEC on pre-election activities and post-election activities, 
What has been the performance of INEC apart from the political parties? Because they have a role to play in, in that. Who, apart from the political parties, INEC has a role to play. Religious institutions have a role to play. Student unionism, what have we done to student unionism across campuses in Nigeria? Because you need some level of student activism because majority of the voters are actually people between the ages of 19 and, and 30. And what do we do to student unionism? We kill it. We ban it on campuses. I am part and parcel of it. I work in tertiary institutions. Dr. Ernest that is there too is part and parcel of it. Majority of the VC today were, were in student union, but across Nigeria, we have destroyed student unionism. We have allowed student union to, to, to exist. And the student union is the platform through which you provide leadership for public governance in future. And then you also use as a foot soldier for the civil society. So invariably, we have shot ourselves in the foot by not allowing some certain institution that should be in place not to be in place. I have said it over and over time again. If I have an opportunity to come before the committees of vice councillors and rectors of Taja, I will tell them, allow student union to try. If you want this society to be better, allow student union to try. Let us have student unionism. We need it to, in order for us to deepen this democracy. Nigerian Labour Congress, where is Nigerian Labour Congress? Where is the organized civil society? Where is the civil society? Beyond. We can't leave it to the political parties because the political parties don't even want people to perform. Parties that, can, that cannot run their own affair. Ordinary conducting um, conventions, their conventions for their parties, they can't do it. They are not asking them to be involved in the major elections. So there are institutions that we should use. The security agencies. In what way do security agencies encourage the citizen participation in the process? Do they intimidate? Do they harass? Or do they create an atmosphere for the for for for, for citizens to feel free to participate to let the electoral process look like a carnival? But 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 uh, 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 Miss Miss uh, Julie Johnson, uh, uh, you've talked about the heavy what you called the heavy militarization of our. Um, uh, elections. Um, Ernest Eric has talked about the do or die attitude of uh, politicians that leads to electoral violence. People will still not feel safe if they're hearing gunshots all over the place from thugs hired by politicians to scuttle elections. These days they don't steal ballot boxes because it doesn't work. They just go and scatter everything. So we need the security agencies to provide safety. It's, it's a fact of even, I mean, in school, you know, both of you would agree, even in exams, you we have policemen outside the hall, as, as low as the WIAC exams. We have policemen outside the hall because of what could happen. Um, um, so so okay. can, can we, we have elections without out. security officials? Now, I agree with you, but the thing is that do, secure, are we, do we train our security officers to know what should be their role during the election? Now, in America, the moment they deploy the soldiers into the civil safety, they are no longer regarded as soldiers. They are called what? National Guard. They are called National Guard. When there are natural disasters, who are those that they deploy? They are called natural guard. So we need to make investment in educating them. Even with the heavy deployment of security, I'm, I'm telling you, Kofi, we still see people, you ask yourself, are these people snatching ballot papers? Are these dogs? Are they spirit? How do they, how are they, how are they able to maneuver the various roadblocks you have during the election for them to perpetuate their evil? If you have ever been involved in election, if you have ever been involved in monitoring election, you will know that we have every presence of security all over the nation. Yet, that does not forestall the people fomenting trouble from fomenting trouble. Then you begin to wonder, why do we deploy the security in the first, in the first instance? So we need to develop an holistic approach. Beyond political parties, the media has a role to play, which is what your station is trying to do and many other stations, in creating citizen awareness, in creating citizen education, in providing a platform through which citizens can be educated and they can take informed decisions. So the electorate themselves, who are the have a road, the political parties, electoral bodies, the religious institutions, the religious, beyond going to Asurok to see the president, beyond going to state house to do a Thanksgiving prayer, Thanksgiving prayer, every beginning of the year or the end of the year, now, that's when you see general overseers of churches. 
going? What has been their role in educating their members to participate in the political in the political process? So these traditional institutions, what has been the role of traditional rulers, traditional traditional rulers, um, um, community based association? So we can't leave this to political parties alone. There are different bodies that should be involved and that should get involved in the management of, of this for us to really get citizen education. For okay. Massive citizen participation in the electoral in the electoral process. And also the courts, the judiciary must give people the confidence that they are an independent habitat. Once the judiciary rules in favor of people's choices, of people's will, you will discover that we have an increased participation in the democratic process. Okay, so um, let's also bring in Enes Sirike, Dr. Enes Sirike, uh, into the conversation as well. Can you hear me, Dr. Enes? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so um, I, I like to be very real. Uh, some of the issues that we have had, because it would be our experience and looking at 2023, now, money politics or politics of money, however I want to put it, has constantly dominated the scene. And that has been, you know, a big issue for us in terms of dictating who becomes governor and who becomes president and what have you in our elections. So um, I'd like to also to ask, do citizens have a role to play? in the politics, uh, you know, the money politics that we practice in our elections and ahead of 2023, how can we, you know, change this narrative? How can Nigerians change this narrative and uh, so that we can have a better outcome? Because at the end of the day, you find that people who are complaining, those who did not participate in the process and those who participated and however sold their votes. So it brings us back, you know, to the same position. The question now would be, is there anything that Nigerians can do as citizens, you know, to move away from this kind of practice and ideology? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, I think it is um, a double-edged sword. And uh, perhaps we can say we, we have found ourselves as a country in a catch-22 situation in the sense that um, we have desperate politicians who uh, grab power, as we mentioned earlier. And then we have uh, citizens who are poor and uh, citizens who feel that they don't have um, any other benefit from the system apart from, you know, on the day of the election when they sell their votes. And so you have these two factors reinforcing each other. You have politicians who want this power at all costs, and therefore they invest heavily in the system, they invest heavily into elections, and then you have citizens who are willing, you know, to, to sell votes because, number one, they are poor, number two, they feel that this is the only benefit they can get from the system. So they reinforce each other, and that is why I say, I said it is a catch-22 situation. And it, this has been the pain of our elections ever since we started improving the electoral system. Uh, you know, uh, uh, politicians realized that one of the potent ways of, uh, you know, uh, winning elections is to buy votes. Uh, uh, that signals that there is an improvement in our electoral system and therefore they have resorted to buying votes. But then we have seen uh, just recently in the November 16 uh, governorship election in Anambra State, we saw uh, these same citizens, these same impoverished citizens who uh, rejected monies that were given to them to vote for, you know, some particular candidates, you know, in, in that election. And so that signals hope. That shows that Nigerians really do understand the issues at stake during elections. And it also means that Nigerians can begin to resist this temptation and the urge to sell their votes. Now, I do not subscribe you know, to, to the campaign, but in some quarters, that Nigerians should go ahead, collect these monies, and still vote the way they wish to vote. Now, that will not help the situation. What will help the situation is to outrightly reject and resist these money bags who spend a lot of money in purchasing votes during elections. Instead of collecting the money and then saying, yes, I will collect from party A and vote for party B, 
that will not solve the problem and it will not help the situation. What will help the situation is outright rejection of, of, of these monies that are offered during elections. But again, and, and very, very important, is that uh, credible individuals, credible citizens, uh, must begin to throw themselves in, in, into the ring. We can no longer continue to stay away from, from, from the system and uh, continue to complain about the system. There are professionals, there are credible Nigerians who can go into the system and inspire confidence you know, in, uh, in, in, in Nigerians. And therefore, we, by doing so, we can begin to defeat these money bags. We have seen it happen in, in, in some parts of the country. And nothing says that we cannot replicate you know, this in most parts of, of the country. So long as credible Nigerians offer themselves you know, to run the affairs of this country. Yes, indeed, uh, I agree that political parties are badly managed in the country. But then again, Nigerians should continue to hold you know, these political parties to account. And right. to ensure that these parties do not just produce money bags as candidates for elections, but right. people who have character, who, people who are competent, and people who have the capacity you know, to inspire the kind of confidence that Nigerians are looking for. You will recall yeah. that 2015 general election, uh, what really sold the president was his past record. And, uh, and his perceived character and his perceived competence and his perceived, uh, yeah, his perceived uh, uh, attitudes towards, you know, corruption. That was what sold, you know, the president. You will recall that the president then said okay. that he didn't have the kind of resources to purchase the nomination of his political party. And yet Nigerians voted for him on the strength of his perceived character and competence. And therefore, I believe that if we continue to enthrone people who are genuinely, who are genuinely willing to offer services to Nigerians, Nigerians will begin, you know, to ditch the money bags and go for such Th Thank you very much. Dr. Reke, thank you. We, we wish we had more time because this is a very important issue to discuss. But um, uh, re regarding the, the uh, comment by J.D. Uh, 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 Johnson, Senior Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, um, uh, of, of, of the role of the clergy or the religious leaders. Um, you, you will recall, if you, if you already know, that um, uh, a church in Ikeja uh, dedicated a Sunday to PVC registration for their members. So that's a positive one. But I cannot leave out the fact that um, uh, some, some, some <laughs> pastors and uh, priests came together at a church somewhere in Nigeria Southwest to pray for one of the um, early announcers of their intention for the presidency, uh, as, as Shewa Jibola Tinubu. They had uh, intensive prayers to clear out anyone who stood in his way. Uh, as guru, <laughs> TV, I went to do a program on the QFM that day, wow. and I actually appeared on your program in the morning that same day via Zoom. So, Blue Roof, the Kanikeja, came together to pray mm -hmm. for. Uh, that's not what we require them to do. What we require them to do is for them, those ones, they went there to collect money. That's just the, the basic truth. I, All I, right. I, we, we have I to go, here. sir. We have to go, sir. I'm, I'm so sorry okay. to, 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 to interrupt you, but we have to leave it at that. Um, people like the flag boy have been going around um, um, Lagos trying to advocate for for uh, um, Nigerians to pick their PVC. You know, we can see pictures on our screen. Um, he's been to several places like Ikeja Computer Village, Ojudubega, Bigfoot, uh, the Tunnel at Maryland, Seven Up Oregon, Yaba Bridge, Yanoworo, and the Third Maryland Bridge. He was the one who was flying the flag during the NSAS protest. But the issue is this, with so many people who have re re registered to vote um, and not voting, should we be focusing on go vote or on Get your PVC. That's a debate we can talk about next time. Thank you very much, um, GD Johnson, Senior Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, and of course, uh, Ernest Reke uh, of Yaga Africa and the University of Abuja, Department of Political Science. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank for, you. We appreciate nice. you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Well, that's the conversation as regards the role of, you know, citizens in uh, the coming elections. I mean, it goes beyond all of the complaints and all of the activities, activism, if you want to say, on social media. We also have a role to play, and I always believe that there's always a human part to every miracle. You have a role to play. You asked an important <laughs> question, which is um, the, 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 the poverty in the land and the role of the, the voter, the demands we make. Yeah. You know, if you don't have money today, you go tell them as far to 
express parts require the desire you are admired. They will tell you, get out of here. <laughs> Oh, right, mercy. Well, that's the much we can take. We'll, we'll definitely step on the brakes when we return. We'll look at the second conversation, the issue of urbanization. Urban famine in Lagos State has been called by the authorities. How viable and how visible is this call for farming in Lagos? Stay with us. We'll be right back.